When we think about how we begin to learn mathematics, often we think that step one is counting. You know, one, two, three, etc. that we learn in primary school. But to a mathematician, the real beginnings are with set theory. The theory of sets, in some ways, is the mathematics behind counting. This is the portion of the class where we're going to learn how to count properly and how to justify things properly. Um, that is, we're going to learn how we can know something mathematically through the art of proof. So you may be overwhelmed by all the things you have to contend with in life and the universe. To begin to create order from this chaos, we introduce the notion of set. Definition. A set is a repetition-free, unordered collection of objects. There's some unpleasant and uncomfortable facts under the rug that all sets are collections, but not all collections are sets. This way lies things like Russell's paradox, things like class theory, etc. But we're going to put this decidedly under the rug for now. In terms of notation, we're going to have a, horse, a horizontal list with entries separated by commas framed by beginning and ending curly braces. So for example, this is the set containing the word orange, the number 12, and this drawing of a smiley face. You can also use words, the set of positive even numbers. Unambiguously describes two, four, six, etc. So you can describe this in set notation or in words. There are also uh, special notations that you'll encounter as we go on. So for example, circle slanty slash through it. Um, this is the set that contains nothing, referred to as the empty set. Example, this fancy Z, this is the set of integers, which we know as the positive and negative whole numbers N is the natural numbers, which are the uh, non-negative whole numbers. And then there is this fancy Q, which is going to be the rational numbers. More on this later. Before we continue, there's a few things that I want to point out. First note that a set differs from a list. There is no notion of an object being in a set more than once. Plus order doesn't matter. So for example, the set containing J, A, and M is equal to the set containing J, A, A, M, which is equal to the set containing M, comma, J, comma, A. And with numbers, four, five, six, the set, is the same as four, five, five, six, is the same as six, five, four. These are different as lists, but the same as sets. The other thing that I want to note here is that a set is different uh, from the objects it contains. And this is a little bit of a subtle point, but think of the object J versus this set. Over here, we have the letter and this is the set containing the letter. These are not the same thing. Okay, so putting this all together, I want you to notice that sets are good for categorization and knowing what objects, what elements are in play. But because of their characteristics, they are not good uh, for taking into account chronology, order, or frequency. 
Sets are a mathematical object, good for some things and bad for other things. So we have to make sure that we're careful about when we deploy them. Essentially, a discussion of sets is a discussion about whether something is in or out. The key consideration is that um, any object that you can think of is either in a given set or not. And a set is defined by the objects that are in it and the objects that are out of it. So we might be motivated to actually come up with a notation for this. So this is notation, or you can write it the other way, depending on what you mean. So here's notation. In a mathematical sentence, you might write x, this symbol a, and this is how you pronounce it. x is an element of the set a, or x is in a, or x is a member of a. The idea is the object x is somehow in the set a. Here are some examples. Example, two is an integer. Example, the letter J is in the set J comma A comma N. Or you can write it the other way, depending on um, the order. This means exactly the same thing. J is a, an element of the set containing J, A, and M. Or you can change it a little bit to mean, you can change it a little bit to negate it. So the word orange is not in the natural numbers. Given this new, new notation showing belonging, um, we can use set builder notation to describe new and more sophisticated sets. So um, let me give you an example. Here's an example of a set builder notation. You have the curly braces, and then on the left of the colon, you have the objects in play, in this case, integers. And on the right of the colon, you have the property those objects must have to be in the set. So said otherwise, this is the set of integers which divide one where this is the symbol for uh, divides. This is the set negative one and one. Here's another example, the rational numbers. Using set builder notation, this is going to be the set of things that look like A over B, such that A and B are both integers, but B can't be zero. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about how to count the elements in a set.